guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna talk about my year in the conservatoire. So this is gonna be a long video, so I would recommend going making yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a nice hot drink or getting yourself a little snack sit down and make yourself comfy because we're going to be here for a little while. So as it's quite unusual for an adult dancer to actually train in a conservatoire, I thought it might be quite an interesting topic for a Q&A. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me any questions you had about my year in the conservatoire and lots and lots of you actually sent questions so thank you so much to anyone who did. Okay, so the first question is how old were you when you got in and were there other adults? So when I auditioned for the conservatoire I was 26 and then very soon after I turned 27. So I was basically 27 for most of the time I was in the conservatoire. And were there other adults? There were a few other adults, but I think the oldest person that I met other than me, and she wasn't studying ballet, she was studying um, Spanish classical dance, so that's kind of like flamenco. She was 22. So the next question was, how long were you there, which conservatory was it, and what did you study? So I studied the professional ballet programme, um, and I was there for one whole year, and I did the second year. Um, so I think there are six years of professional training. There are other ones as well that you can start when you're a bit younger, maybe like eight, nine, ten, um, eleven. But then the professional years, there are six, and I went straight into second year. So I did the whole of second year. And as I said, I did the classical dance program, which is pretty much all ballet classes, ballet technique and things. We did have one module of character dance. If anyone's done the RAD um, grades like one to eight, then you'll know about character as well. Um, but it's kind of based off different folklore dances from different countries. Um, and you do it in character shoes, which is different from ballet shoes. And the name of the conservatoire that I went to is Conservatorio Profesional de Danza. Comandante Fortea, so I'll link their website in the description box below in case anyone's interested to go and like see which one it was. But there are a few different ones in Madrid. I think there are at least three in Madrid, so Comandante Fortea is one of them. Lots and lots of you asked a very similar question to this one, which is how did you get the opportunity to dance there? Or how did you get in? Or how did you get accepted? Um, and I went through exactly the same process as any other student at the conservatoire so basically you just have to audition to get in there. Not all conservatoires will take in adults, I think it might depend on the conservatoire. I don't know because obviously I've only been to one and I only applied to one as well. So there are two different auditions. There's one audition to get into the professional program. So basically that means you're going to start from first year and obviously there are lots and lots and lots of people at that audition. And then before that audition, the audition that I did is the audition to get into um, one of the different years. So you kind of slot in to one of the years that already exists and like there's already a class for that year. So. That's the audition that I did and I know that there are a couple of people who also did my audition who didn't get in to one of like from second year or above but they were invited to go back to the first year audition. Um, so I think in my audition there weren't that many of us, I think there were maybe like 10 people or something like that. Five of us got in and I guess the other five maybe got invited back for the first year audition or something like that. But everyone who was in my audition obviously had a lot of ballet training, a lot, most of them, because they weren't adults, most of them had come from um, like dance schools in other parts of the country or possibly in Madrid, um, but it kind of seemed like most of them were from like outside of Madrid and I guess they decided that they really wanted to study. Um, ballet seriously and come to Madrid into, into the conservatoire but they were already a good level so that audition process was um, a ballet class in like normal ballet flats uh, obviously with a panel who are watching you um, and it's one of the teachers from the conservatoire who gives the class um, and obviously they're mainly watching um, technique and like potential and probably how quickly you uh, pick up the exercise, paying attention, musicality, I mean they're kind of looking for an all-round, um, not already formed dancer but someone who they feel like will be able to learn and progress quickly in their conservatoire. So that was the first part and then there was point which was actually quite nerve-wracking that bit. I don't know why but that point bit, especially point in the centre because 
I'd only been doing point for like less than six months, I think, when I did that audition. So that was really quite terrifying for me, but it was fine, <laughs> got through it. So then we went and we did a theory exam, which was kind of around the history of dance, um, other aspects of like ballet technique and things like that. Then actually, so we'd finished all of the audition and the exam and stuff. I think they marked it really quickly there. It wasn't very long. It wasn't like a big long exam or anything. It was like 10, 15 minutes exam or something. Then they kind of came in and they said, you've got into this year, you've got into this year, you've got into this year. And they said to me, can we um, like speak to you? So I was like, uh oh, <laughs> that's what's going on. Why do they want to speak to me? Um, and so then I went and spoke to the two directors and they were like, you know, we want to invite you to come into second year, but we kind of need to know why you're here and why at this age you're interested in studying, studying in a conservatoire and you need to realise that you're going to be in a class with like 13, 14 year olds and just kind of checking that I knew what I was getting myself in for, I guess. Obviously I explained that like I had a degree in contemporary dance and that I've always loved dance, but I've just recently got back into ballet and I would love to actually train properly in ballet and that I was like really passionate about it and dedicated and I didn't mind being in a class with younger students and so that was it. Then I was invited into second year so I think that was in June or July and so that was to start in September so after the summer holidays. So that was how I got into the conservatoire, exactly the same process as anyone else of any age. <laughs> How did your body react to the load? So I remember the first week they really went like quite slowly because obviously even though everybody else in that class had already done a whole year at the conservatoire, everybody had had a summer holiday so it was really nice. I don't want to say like really slow classes but it was really like cleaning technique, um, not pushing you so hard at like loads and loads of jumps or anything like that. So I remember the beginning feeling like, okay, this is good. I can, this is like a quite nice rhythm. It's almost like much slower than my adult ballet classes. And at that point I was feeling like quite confident, even though I had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of corrections, like very specific technique, yeah, technical corrections. I mean, luckily I'd only been going for like a year to adult ballet classes. So I didn't have that many, well I did have lots of bad habits but they weren't so ingrained that it was difficult to change them. I mean it, again it was difficult but it wasn't like impossible. But I had to really correct a lot of things. I remember something that specifically I had to focus on so much and it was so hard like those first few weeks was getting my heel forward in a retire position and it was something that I felt like I had a good retire because it was high um, but my leg wasn't like like this part of my leg was turned out but the bottom part wasn't turned out and I wasn't pushing my heel forward so I just remember things like that and my body being like oh this all feels like a bit different and so my body definitely had to adjust then um but then after the first like couple of weeks I guess after the summer holidays then we started getting into like proper hardcore classes and then my body was really like in shock <laughs> um it was like every single day I had sore muscles, stiff muscles, and I remember going in the next day and being like, I don't know how my body's gonna dance again today. Um, but once I was warmed up and once the class was going, like your body, it just does it. it yeah, I was tired, especially because we used to have like an exam after every um, like semester. So we had, yeah, one before Christmas, one before Easter, and then one at the end of term. And I remember those, especially like the three weeks before, which are like super, super, super intense and like you don't get breaks. And yeah, I just remember like we would run straight through the bar, like no time for drinking water, no time. In fact, it was even in one of the exams, almost like the pianist made the whole thing like one piece of long music. So there was like no breaks. It was definitely like at least three or four exercises in the same Thing. So you would just go from one side to the other side of please, come back round and you're straight into tondus, turn back round, you're straight into um, letters and yeah, it was really hard and I used to get home and just collapse on the sofa and like, <laughs> 
yeah my boyfriend really had to like look after me that year because yeah it was it was really tiring and obviously the way that they're pushing people is very different for like a 13 year old like your body's so fresh and it and like bendy and resilient and recovers much more quickly as well so it was it was hard for me but I did it and I was really proud of myself and I was so strong but so strong by the end of that year like just like clean technique and I nearly nearly managed to close my fifth that year although that's not necessarily a good thing because actually something else that happened to my body that year is that I got injuries in both of my hips from forcing my turn out um, too quickly and too hard and too fast. This is one of the things that is different and is difficult if you're an adult because you can't be forcing your tendons and your ligaments and your joints as much as if you're younger where everything is still very supple um, things haven't like solidified quite as much at that point. It was one of the reasons why I decided to leave the conservator after a year. It's not the only reason but my hip injuries was one of the reasons and especially my left hip and I had really good turnout by the end of that year but it was almost useless because I was just in so much pain before I warmed up like I remember there were days oh god there were days when I couldn't even like walk when I got out of bed it was so so painful and again I think I couldn't walk when I like first woke up because my body was trying to protect itself but then when I got into class and I was warmed up and I'd like force my muscles to loosen up a bit like the pain went away while I was dancing so I could still train but it wasn't really like healthy and this was more like by the kind of the end of the year because at the beginning obviously I wasn't forcing it like as much again it wasn't one moment that suddenly I felt like injured it was very gradual and progressive but I did have like quite beautiful turnout at that point in my life, um, much better than it is now, but it wasn't healthy for my body, it wasn't good for my body. And I guess that is one of the dangers because at the conservatory, I mean, again, it will depend on which one you go to and who your teacher is, but like she didn't treat me any differently just because I was over 10 years older than all the other <laughs> students in that class, like I had to do everything exactly the same as them and there was nothing less expected of me like I got marked exactly the same as everyone else and I was expected to do the same as everyone else turn out as much as everyone else so yeah it was hard it was it was a hard year for my body so the next question which I kind of just touched on how did they react and work with you knowing your age so the other people in my class were amazing they were like so lovely and most of them were like 13 or 14 but there were like three people who were either 16 or 17 um, and I kind of like ended up speaking to them a bit more just because you just have more in common with people who are a bit older I guess but even the younger ones like they were all so lovely it was honestly such a lovely class and everyone was so sweet and I have like such fun memories of my time there with those people and it's actually amazing because one of the guys who was in my class at the conservatoire is now in the English Ballet School which is so cool he's probably in his final year either now or next year yeah I was in there with some amazingly talented um, and lovely dancers which is really cool and as I said they didn't really I mean obviously I'm sure they saw me differently but they didn't behave any differently to me or treat me any differently in general Spaniards are very welcoming and open so you know, I don't want to say that it's only because of that, but that might have been part of it as well. And then, as I just said, with regarding the teacher, she also didn't treat me any differently, which at, honestly, at times was hard. Like, there were moments when I was like, mm, like, you don't need to speak to me like that. Like, I understand what you're saying. I was almost as close to her age as I was to their age. And there were times when it was hard and like, she would really shout at me like she would shout at the others and it would be like kind of embarrassing but I just had to get over that and be like well this is why I'm here you know I want to get better at ballet even though this way of teaching it feels strange to me because I am an adult because you know some of the other students in my class when they're 13 or 14 you know some days they don't feel like being there and some days they are messing around or like I mean, never really messing around because it was pretty strict, but you could tell that sometimes they weren't pushing themselves or they weren't necessarily motivated. I mean, in general they were, but you know, there were days and in those moments, you know, like she would maybe shout at them or whatever and it would work, but I just felt like with me, you know, it didn't need to be like that. Sometimes she would really criticize like my dancing 
in a not helpful way, like just in a way that made me feel <laughs> like crap. That was all, I guess, part of the experience. And as I said, like each teacher will have their different methods. Not all of the teachers at that conservatoire were as strict as her. She kind of had a reputation for being like very strict, but also of getting the best out of her students, which she definitely did. Like, yeah, I mean, she was, I learned so much from her. She was an amazing teacher, but there were moments where it felt like weird. Okay, the next question is, do you think you would have become a professional had you continued? Because the reasons that I didn't carry on were basically, as I said, because of my hip injuries um, and also because I was, I needed to work, like I was really poor that year because I was working part time um, and then training at the conservatoire, which obviously that's not enough hours really to be able to earn money and save money or like to earn enough money. I mean, I earned enough money just to cover my costs and stuff and actually the conservatory in Madrid a lot is like largely state funded so it was really cheap to go there which was amazing and I'm so 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 grateful for that but you know I still had to pay rent and buy food and buy my travel card and all of that kind of thing so it was a, it was a difficult year in like financially and also I was just knackered I was so 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 tired um, from working and dancing that intensively so in some ways it's like inevitable that I just couldn't really have carried on although on the other hand if I hadn't have had those injuries and like imagine that I could have been living like rent free or whatever then had I carried on yeah I mean I don't know exactly in what kind of context I would have been able to be a professional dancer. I remember my teacher saying to me, because at some point I think she also was like, you know, why are you here or what What do you want from this? Um, and at that point I was like, well, I'm not sure, but I'm really enjoying it. And whether it turns into teaching or, you know, dancing in a very small group or whatever, like I'm just really, really enjoying being here and improving my ballet and whatever. And she said, um, you know, if you carry on, you can be in a corps de ballet of a company. Um, and she was like, obviously, by the time you leave, it would have been this year, actually, if I'd have carried on. So this was, yeah, four years ago. So this would have been my last year at the conservatoire had I continued. So I would have been graduating this July. And I'm 31 now. So she was like, obviously, at 31, you probably won't be able to work your way up to, like, soloist or anything like that. Um, or, you know, certainly not principal, but she was like, if you really wanted to dance professionally, I think you could be in a corps de ballet. Um, and that's kind of also just because I'm lucky in terms of my body type. I'm kind of, I guess, a similar height. I've got kind of similar legs. My knees aren't great, but, you know, my lines are good. They're okay. And I guess if I'd have carried on, my technique would have improved and I would have got much stronger and like good enough to dance. I guess in a corps de ballet. I mean, I mean, obviously not, you know, Royal Ballet, corps de ballet or anything like that, um, but maybe one of the like smaller companies in Spain or something like that. But even then, I didn't have that goal, like even when she asked me and she said that, that she thought like if I carried on then I could do that. Um, it was never my goal or my dream actually to be a professional ballet dancer once I was an adult. Like yes, it was my dream when I was like four or five years old, but it was never my idea. Like my whole reason to be there was to have that experience and to like improve my ballet. I, I don't know, I never really had that burning desire to become a professional dancer because I, I know as well, like, you know, the the younger ones might not necessarily have had such an idea about just, you know, finances, travel, what it means to be a dancer and be in like a committed relationship. Just there are lots and lots and lots of things which I kind of knew um, and I realised that that wasn't necessarily like where I wanted to go with it. So I guess if I had carried on then maybe I would have been able to be a professional dancer but it was never really my plan. Okay, next question was, was it hard? How many hours did you dance a day? It was hard and um, it was hard all the way through, but the things that were really difficult kind of changed um, throughout the year that I was there. So I remember at the beginning, like in the first semester, it was really hard because I had so many like 
basic errors and basic technique things to correct and I had to be thinking about them and then on top of that I had to be thinking about the new things that were being added. The things that I was still thinking about, those who had been there for a year already had them like ingrained in their body, in the muscle memory, like kind of automatic. And obviously in ballet you always have to be thinking about everything and you know always trying to improve on even the basics but I even remember things like just the direction of my head like I don't know why but in adult ballet classes they don't focus on that very much and at the conservatoire they're super strict about the direction of your head so that's something that for example it's not tiring it's not super difficult but I had to be thinking about it because it wasn't automatic for me and just you know the angle and the changes of thing and like when it's towards the bar away from the bar even just like the inclination oh there was so I just remember the first few months being like I'm trying so hard to correct like every part of my body like I had to correct I, I literally had to correct every part of my body I had to correct my feet I had to like lift my arches more I had to correct my arms like my elbow wasn't lifted enough it was slightly too far back um, I had to correct my posture because I still had like too much of a curve in my lower back I had to correct like my head I had to correct my shoulders I had to correct like everything this is before you've even given me a movement to do um, so I remember being like quite overwhelmed in the first semester just at like how much I had to correct and that was really hard <laughs> on top of like learning different exercises and actually trying to improve my technique and strength and flexibility and all of those other things. That was what was really hard in the first semester. I think in the second semester the really hard thing was it was really hard on my body and my body was really tired and I was really tired. My brain was also tired because well you guys who dance like you know it's not just like going to the gym and doing a workout and you come out and your body's tired like after ballet your brain is also tired sometimes you even feel like your soul is tired because you've given so much of yourself to the class um, and of course your whole body's tired and not just like one part of your body but the whole body so that was kind of what was hard about the second term and then the last term we also had a show right at the end of term and I think that I don't know why but I put so much pressure on myself in that term and I also had like a little duet part in the in our class dance then in that last term of the year um, I had to put on top of all of that some expression which I found so hard and I honestly still to this day find that quite hard and this is like four years after <laughs> it was hard all the way through but for different reasons what was the other part of that question I've already forgotten oh how many hours did you dance a day um, we had a slightly different timetable each day, so obviously it was Monday to Friday. I think the least amount of hours that we had was two and a half, and I think the most amount of hours we had was, was it like three and a half or four? No, yeah, more, yeah, four. I think every day except one day I did ballet on flats. And then every single day except one day I did ballet on point. So I think there was one day that was just flats and one day that was just point. And then every other day I did flats and then after point. Although there were some days that we were like scheduled to have a, a lesson on flat flats and then point. But the teacher would say like put your point shoes on and we would do like the whole normal flat ballet shoe class in point. Just to build up strength and stuff because... Um, the show that we did at the end of the year was on point so I know that doesn't seem like a lot of hours those were the hours that we had taught like with the teacher but inevitably I was always there for like the days that we had two and a half hour classes I would be there for like three and a half hours because I would go and warm up for half an hour and then stretch after for like 20 minutes half an hour so you can add on another hour to like every single day for how long I actually spent at the conservatoire. I couldn't just arrive and go into class. Like, it would have been really dangerous for me to do that for my body. Like, some of the younger ones can do that because, like, as I said, like, they're still so supple and flexible and their bodies are, I don't know, <laughs> more vibrant. But I really had to, you know, go in and warm up every single day. Like, if I'd have gone there and just arrived and gone straight into class like I seriously think I could have injured myself in, in like a like a proper injury that was extra time for me but like it was so important and I definitely had to do that okay next question what did you learn from it mentally and technically technically so many things I mean I I would literally learn something new every day because I had so much to catch up on and obviously when I say you know everybody else there had been at the conservatoire for one year yes they've been at the conservatoire for one year but they'd also 
you know, dance ballet for another six or seven years or eight years before that one year as well. So I had so much catching up to do. So even when, you know, other people in the class might not necessarily have learned anything that day, you, obviously they were getting stronger. I was still learning something like every day, <laughs> um, which is also why I quite often talk about listening to the corrections of other people and applying them to yourself. Because if I hadn't have done that in that class, then I wouldn't have got half as good as I did because like she was correcting like the best people in the class more and I was not one of the best people in the class <laughs> I can tell you that much I mean by the end I was probably somewhere around the middle um, but when I first went in I was one of the worst if not the worst anyway technically I learned so much it's even like impossible for me to even start I don't know where to start with that I try in all of my videos especially like my bar my ballet bar basics, my ballet centre basics and then my point videos everything that I've learned at the conservatoire I'm giving you all of that knowledge <laughs> as much knowledge as I can um, especially things that I know don't necessarily get talked about as much in adult ballet classes I'm trying to give you all the information that I got in my year in the conservatoire through my videos because I don't think there's any reason why adult ballet dancers can't apply those types of corrections and really focus on having really clean technique as well so that's kind of another inspiration for me of like why I make these videos because I feel like I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to learn ballet in that very specific and technically focused way that I want to be able to share that with you guys and obviously there's so much more that I didn't learn because I didn't continue for like the other four years <laughs> can you imagine like how much I would know by now but obviously I have continued to learn technique in other places like last year I did the RAD intermediate exam obviously I learned different things about technique in that as well so for me I'm always learning things about technique but for sure the most intensive period of my life where I've learned about ballet technique was in the conservatoire and mentally um, I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about resilience I learned a lot about what I was still able to do what I was still capable of doing that actually a lot of what stops people from doing things is themselves thinking that they can't or telling themselves that they can't or worrying about what society will think or worrying that it's too late and what I learned that year is it's really not too late and your body is capable of things that you have no idea <laughs> until you really really push it or someone else is pushing you then yeah it's incredible what you can do okay someone said what do you do in class so I mean it's pretty similar to an adult ballet class in terms of the structure although I didn't have as much Grand Allegro as, it, as in some adult ballet classes, again, some adult ballet classes they don't even do Grand Allegro, which is really annoying. But I remember at the beginning when I first started, I felt like I was really taking a huge step back because I'd been doing movements which were more advanced than my actual technique was, if that makes sense. I remember, but at least like the first month, we only did single pirouettes. So having been doing doubles before, probably messy doubles, in fact not probably, like definitely like messy, not with really really good clean technique, but going back to single pirouettes um, and really focusing on every single thing about the technique and making them really clean, finishing in releve and then coming down and things like that. The class was I guess more simple than some like intermediate or advanced ballet classes, adult ballet classes. But the structure is the same. You know, at the bar, you do the same exercises in the same order. We didn't use to skip exercises because I've noticed in adult ballet classes, I guess sometimes because of time or just the teacher's preference or whatever, they will miss, like quite often, they might miss the adage exercise or they might miss the fondue exercise or they might miss tondus in first position. But we used to do plies, tondus in first, tondus in fifth, Jeté, we might do two jeté exercises, um, then we would do rond de jambe, and then probably a fondue maybe, different types of exercises in there, sometimes like a rond de jambe on there, adage, and then obviously frappes, maybe a petit batman, and then grand batman. We never used to miss any of those, um, and the same in the centre, like we would never miss adage in the centre, or we would never miss, I don't know, like pirouettes in the centre and then move on to like pirouettes from the diagonal, we would always do all of those. So um, it was really thorough, I guess. But it would mean that obviously sometimes we didn't have time for Grand Allegro. For that level, it was much more important to get the little jumps clean and the Petit Allegro clean. And oh my God, we used to do so much Petit Allegro. 
I just remember that year being like, okay, I've mastered the tondu because um, we did so many tondus at the bar and in the centre. And then I also did more petit leg in that year than probably the rest of my life combined. The structure was the same pretty much other than obviously in some classes we would maybe like break down an exercise and just do that one exercise for like 20 minutes, which you won't do in an adult ballet class because they like to keep it moving. Um, but for example, if that day pirouettes weren't great from like a few people in the class, then we would do pirouettes for like 20 minutes, just pirouettes from fifth, pirouettes from fifth, pirouettes from fifth. So I guess that was the difference and we would break down more exercises much slower. And then point class was really quite different actually. In adult point classes, I feel like they don't want to bore you, whereas at the conservatoire, like they don't care about boring you, they just want you to have really good technique. So I don't know how many échappées we did that year. It was a lot, it was a lot. And we did a lot of stuff at the bar. We did so many échappées and relevés, but I loved point. So um, I still enjoyed it because I could like really feel myself working and getting stronger and getting more confident on point. So even though like it was a bit boring in terms of like just repeating exercises over and over and over and over again and then you finish and you think that's it and then she's like no because someone didn't finish in a perfect fifth position or something and then you do it again i mean i i was so lucky in some ways i'm like i'm glad that i was an adult because i knew i was there and every class like even if i was like absolutely exhausted and my muscles were aching and I felt like I couldn't do any more and I definitely felt like that like probably at least once a week that I was like I can't like I physically can't do this again um, and then somehow you do it and you don't know how but your body just is amazing like that okay this question is kind of related to the last one so how does this compare to other places you've been a student at so the conservatoire was 100% the most intense and the most difficult and also the place where I improved the most. But obviously just the pressure that you're under there as well. And obviously a lot of the pressure was like I put on myself, but you can't go wrong unless you prepare to be shouted at. You can't do things like by, you know, even 80%, like you better be doing it 100% because um, they will, they'll know and they will test you. <laughs> it's a whole different atmosphere in the conservatoire, like you can't just go and drink water when you're thirsty. For example, we weren't allowed to drink water until like halfway through bar and then just before center. It was a very, very intense experience and it's very different to an adult ballet class because as much as maybe it's bad that I admit it, like I can go to a ballet class and I usually am dancing 100% because that's just kind of, who I am and and how I like to enjoy the class and push myself and make the most of it and I'm, I guess part of that definitely comes from being in the conservatoire as well and having that kind of work ethic but you know there are days where I am a bit more tired and I might not do an exercise at 100% I might do it at 90 or like at 80. In an adult ballet class it's more unusual that you'll be shamed or embarrassed so that takes away a bit of the fear, which is much more productive for pirouettes, can I just say, because I used to have so much fear around pirouettes. Um, and my teacher did shout at me, like very specifically at me, um, because of a double pirouette that I did. And so in some ways it's more conducive to, definitely to enjoying it more, play around more and feel a little bit more, yeah, like comfortable and secure in an adult ballet class obviously in the conservatoire like you do get pushed a lot more and you do improve really quickly i would also just say that like now i wouldn't go into a conservatoire like i've had that experience it was amazing i'm so grateful for it i learned so much i cleaned up my technique now when i go to adult ballet classes like there are things that i think about which I feel really grateful for that I know that like other people probably aren't thinking about just because they haven't had that experience and they don't necessarily know those like really base corrections like lift your arches all the way through bar and well every single exercise but you know just thinking about not rolling your feet forward even something as small as that if the teacher isn't saying it and people really aren't aware that they're doing it or they're not even aware that that's something they should be thinking about but now I just I, I appreciate adult ballet classes even more because of how much I can enjoy it and how much I can get out of it and how much there's no pressure other than the pressure that I put on myself. Um, I mean, I'm lucky to have 
had like really good teachers as well in adult body classes who have pressured not necessarily pressured me but have like demanded things of me um which is really good and have corrected me um so that's really nice and actually i feel like in adult ballet classes i get corrected more than i did at the conservatoire just because i think adult ballet class teachers can see that i'm like hungry for corrections and to improve okay next question this is such a long video <laughs> Um, how did you cope with the pressure of such an intense dance environment? And I think the main thing was just like remembering why I was there, remembering that it was my decision to be there, remembering that I was so lucky to have that opportunity. I think that was the other thing, like even when I was absolutely shattered, I didn't feel like going, like all I wanted to do was just curl up in bed. Um, just thinking like, God, I'm so lucky to have gotten in and to actually have this opportunity to train with like these amazing other dancers and with these incredible teachers. I just wanted to soak it all up. Like I was such a sponge that year. So I was always so grateful for that, that the intensity was okay. And and obviously in terms of the intensity on my body, like I really tried to look after, my, after myself. Like I said, I always went, always before to warm up. I was always there before everyone else and I always left after everyone else. Um, but that was just me like taking care of myself because my body wasn't a 13 year old or a 16 year old body. That was kind of part of it as well, just looking after myself, making sure that I ate really well. I used to eat, I mean, I still do. I eat a lot, I've always eaten a lot um, and healthy. So just kind of making sure that I was fueling my body with the right things. Also just giving myself like weekends off, which obviously you have weekends off every anyway because you're not at the conservatoire um, Saturday, Sunday, but Saturdays and Sundays like, oh, maybe I should stretch a bit. But I actually was just like, do you know what? I always go early and I always stay late and I stretch when I'm there and I was like it's actually just really healthy for me to disconnect for those two days so that's what I used to do as well and I think that also helped me to just stay <laughs> sane and remember that there was life outside of ballet and outside of the conservatoire because at moments it was kind of all consuming especially coming up to like open classes or exams or the show. So. Okay, were students supportive of each other or was it a competitive atmosphere? Definitely people were much more supportive of each other and uh, again, I can't speak for other conservatoires, I can't speak for other countries, I can only really speak for what I witnessed at the conservatoire but people really supported each other and like I remember there would be days we would finish class and someone would go up to the change rooms and they would start crying because like they'd been like shouted at or they'd been embarrassed or they'd done something, you know, they couldn't turn that day or whatever it was. Um, and you know all the girls would be around and just like supporting them and we really supported each other because in the end you're all going through this difficult um tiring challenging thing together and i think it really humbles you because even the best people in that class like you're still learning had a lot of corrections they still got shouted at so in a way like you're all in the same boat and you just help each other get through it and you support each other Something that I've always also noticed in Spain in general, and this is not necessarily just in the conservatoire, but also I've seen it as a teacher myself in Spanish schools, the students really tend to like stick together and it's almost more like students against teacher than students against each other and like there are some like keen students who kind of want to look good for the teacher. That's just an interesting thing that I've noticed about Spain in general. Uh, so again, I'm not sure if that was because of that or if it was the conservatoire, but I do think in general, being a ballet student, you have to be humble because in the end, like we're all learning and we all know it's difficult. So even the best people who, you know, have so much talent and are hardworking or whatever, they still get corrected and have bad days. So definitely we were supportive of each other and when there was a little bit of competition, like I think it was honestly only healthy competition, I for one never felt like competitive with anyone else because how the hell was I going to compare myself to people who had been dancing their whole lives um, when I just come in. So certainly for me anyway there was like zero competition because I never saw any of those as my competition. Like I was on a completely different journey to what they were on. Um, and I think there was a little bit of competition, um, but healthy competition, like, because everyone was friends in that class and, like, 
you know, between the boys, maybe there was competition of like, you know, who can jump the highest or do the most pirouettes and between the girls, you know, who could get their leg highest in adagio or whatever. Um, but it was always a healthy competition and no one was ever, you know, mean to each other or taking it too far or anything like that. So. Okay, so the last question is what were the exams like? Probably kind of as you imagine, it was, uh, we prepared exactly what were going to be the exercises for the exam and we really intensively prepared that exam for like the month or three weeks before we would like only do that we would do it over and over and over and over and over again so actually when it came to doing the exam it felt shorter because we'd been forced to do it so many times and so intensively that actually on the day of the exam your body is like used to that intensity and like without breaks and all of that kind of thing as you can imagine we did the bar, as I said, without pretty much any breaks at all. Then we would do the center in different groups, like five or six of us in a group, so like two and three or three and three. And you would do one exercise and then the next exercise you would change lines. You would like take turns being at the front, but you could always be seen because it, it was like staggered. And then the boys would do their extra jumps and turns and things like that. And then we would be putting our point shoes on and then we would do point and that would be our exams and then we also had open classes which was basically a repeat of our exam but with uh, like it was open so that people's parents could come like my boyfriend came and watched me once so um, that was kind of doing the exam again but actually enjoying it because you're performing it and you're not being marked on it <laughs> although it did get recorded as well so um, but unfortunately I don't have any of that footage oh this is something I didn't mention my other classmates they had to do one hour of music as well extra each week um, but because I had A level music um, it was really basic for me so luckily I just could get like a photocopy of my A level music certificate and I handed it in and I didn't have to go to those music classes but they also had um, a music exam and I think the first music exam I also just had to go to that exam. Um, I didn't have to like go to classes or study for it, but like read some music and like clap the rhythm and sing the notes and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I did that as well, but I didn't have to do that for the rest of the year. Um, and that was it. So guys, that is an epic long video all about my time at the conservatoire. I really hope you've enjoyed it and that it's given you a bit of insight into my time there or what it's like at a conservatoire for someone who's an adult. As I said, I was so, so grateful to have had my time there and I wouldn't change it, but I also, <laughs> I wouldn't audition to be in a conservatoire again at this point. So yeah, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm really grateful that I got to do it but I'm also like really happy to just be going to my adult ballet classes. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.